Welcome to the El Salto International Raceway here in El Salto, Argentina, for the uh, Argentine for the round of Argentina. This is going to be a very interesting race here. This is by far the longest track Arkansas has ever been to. It's 6.2 miles long. It's very high speeds with a lot of pretty slow corners on it. It's got a crossover on it. I haven't seen a crossover in a long time in this series. I want to say Suzuka was the last time we had one a crossover on a track. But this track is very high speed. It's a very kind of point-and-shoot kind of road course. And um, there are a couple of more flowing corners, but it's a very point-and-shoot road course. And it uh, should be a pretty interesting race. with a lot of uh, pretty close racing, I want to say. Uh, just no real news items coming out of it, except that there were some penalties for Trek Tauger. Got one last week. Uh, a few other guys got a penalty last week. Trying to think, Vander Pesch was one of them. Somebody else got a penalty, five points. I think it was James Shelley actually got a five-point penalty. All got five-point penalties for uh, um, incidents that were deemed avoidable. And uh, the only other thing is that the championship is heating up, and we're going to start eliminating more cars. I think coming up here. Anyway, let's go to the round of Argentina. Jacob Hart leads the field of 42 down to the green. Aiden Shepard had a little bit of problems getting away. However, he will be a little further back, but he will be in this race. Green flag is out. Hart gets the start. Michelle yet does have a bit of an advantage entering turn one here, but ah, uh, Baskinger's trying something way down low. That's got to be an aggressive move. Here's the first turn. It's a left-hander, but Baskinger ended up had to back way out. There's Vander Pesch back there, or up into second position as the field kind of maneuvers their way, beginning the 6.2 mile lap here. There's a big hairpin here now. There's a lot of contact they're worried about. Ooh, a big contact further back with um, Ekdal. It looks like Fitzwater gained a ton of spots there on that start, but Ekdal's got a lot of front end damage. And I think the biggest gain's been Fitzwater so far. So what happened here with Ekdal? Ekdal's trying to get over and actually Jackwater cuts over in front of him and that pushes Jackwater up into the 08. And Fitzwater gains about four to five spots there. So that's what you got to do if you're Zachary Fitzwater. As uh, Jackwater's running Tauger off the road. That's not cool. Meanwhile, Christian Vander Pesch would take over the lead, and James Shelley would get second position after uh, Hart runs wide there. And, uh, well, that allows the top two to get away. Bad run shaping up and qualifying for uh, DJ Curtis and for... Uh, his teammate Vincent Allen, so both the Red Bulls had a pretty bad qualifying run. There's Shelton trying to hang on. Shelton barely hanging on to the points. As we go kind of through the order, a lot of cars coming in with damage repair. Uh, Dodd was involved in kind of that first lap Shamazel. First turn two Shamazel, and uh, he's going to come down the road as well. And obviously, Ekdal will, because he has some pretty serious run of damage. So James Shelley is solidly in second position behind Christian Vander Pesch. Third is Jacob Hart. Fourth is Ryan Griffin. Fifth is Baskier. Sixth is Noah Hart. Ooh, contact further back. That's Saren and around. Stella's in it. And oh, Jackwater blowing up. Wonder if she had some contact there. Yeah, Jackwater would just grenade it right here, and that would actually pull up quite a lot of cars there. As there's Jackwater grenading it, entering. Fitzwater getting really aggressive there with the five, trying to get by, but uh, kind of messed up there. As, ooh, contact there between the 15 and the 95. Uh, and there's some contact there between the 73 and the 41 as well, as the 20 is trying to get by the 95. Meanwhile, for Tomas Saradin, he would get down into the corner here, and you'll see he gets hit by the 24. And then the 31 took a lot of front end damage after hitting the back of the 61, trying to miss it. James Shelley now has reeled into the back of the four car. Here is he's going to come around, I think, pretty quickly here and finish the lap. I don't think he's got much longer to go. Yeah, right here is the end of the lap. Lap two done. Looks like one of the quick fit cars also broke down. We're going to take a look and see what happened to him. We're going to see Will Shelley try to make a move the inside of this corner. Really isn't one of the better ideas. I think it would be wise for him to stay out got to be pretty much one wide through turn one here. Down into turn two, that's your main passing zone is out breaking your competition to that. Here they come down into turn two. 
Shelly's not close enough. This was on the start of lap two. This is Gabe Vicena, one of the uh, Brazilian or South American natives. There's a lot of fan base here. And, uh, well, he would have to stop because of Jackwater breaking down and he wasn't able to restart his car. Tristan Wilhoyt would then be battling with Chase Stella here. Wilhoyt would go across the curbing and lose the rear end of the car and slide into the grass. Tough break for Wilhoyt. Kyle Michelli also on lap two would have an off here as he's kind of going through this S-Bend complex and would lose the rear end of it right there at the top of the screen and fall into the uh, tire barrier. Michelli, however, then would get turned by the 15 car, sending him into the outside wall in the next corner. So the 15 would uh, wreck the one car again. However, the 25 then would break down and lose the rear end of the car after blowing up the motor as she would try and get on to pit road and could and she is trying to figure out a way to get that car running again and the 80 car would hit her. Shelton and Shelton I think would just park it against the wall. However, Shelton as she was trying to get away would get into, or Vander Petsch would get into her and blow up the four car in the process. So Vander Pesch falls out of the lead because Shelton is in the middle of the track and a bunch of cars are then trying to miss him. End up hitting him, which is kind of silly here as he's trying to get out of the way. Dodd would get to the back of the 14 car, sending Dodd around. And that was a very, very silly incident there. Shelton really should have been off the track, not trying to drive around there. So James Shelley now on the uh, start of lap five has a massive lead over Jacob Hart. You have Jenny Kuznetsov, Ryan Griffin, Charles Samper, who beats this good race here. Saber, Hart, Angel. Um, oh, there's Washer wrecked. I wonder what happened to him. Ooh, Saren, it slams into him. There's Fitzy in it. Lots of cars now in this one right here as they're all trying to dive low. Not sure the point of that. Gabe Messina is leaving the pits here as, uh, well, right on the line there. Washer should have really been paying attention there. And, ooh, there's the 12 hitting him. The 94 would get involved. The 94 had a great race going, too, and, well, a big stack up because of it. Meanwhile, while Vander Pesch is breaking down, uh, Alex Allen would get into him here, sending him kind of around there. And then Angel, or no, that's Siren, I'm sorry. Big stack up further up the track when Aiden Shepard would then hit the side of the night 73 car, sending him around. A little bit earlier in the run, also, we had Kenny Maya lose the rear end of the car from a nice eighth position and back into the tires. So, Maya, a major champion contender, having a bad race. Now you've got Andrew Cross going really slow here, and Michaels isn't happy about it. Michaels has some front end damage from another incident, and uh, Michaels. Take uh, cross right off the track. Noah Hart now is all over the back of Charles Sanford. This is the position here, entering the hairpin. And this is a big time move here because Hart needs to gain points. And well, uh, Sanford being the point leader, yeah, that's how you're going to do it. And actually, Sanford lost a couple of spots there. Down to seventh position, actually. Yeah, seventh position. So Sanford's got to pick up the pace here. Meanwhile, the car behind him, Sean Angel, is doing a good job in eighth position here, trying just to hold on to the things here. Tyler Faber, a guy we haven't talked about, he is a championship contender as well. He's a bit of a long shot, but he definitely could be a threat if he can string together some good races. Oh, Koozie's broken down. That's Ryan Griffin in it. And Faber's going to get held up because of it. And Sanford and Angel will. Nick Pericles is a couple of, is quite a ways behind Angel and Sanford. However, uh, Pericles needs them to start screwing around a bit here, and they kind of are, because Pericles wants those points. Pericles needs to finish in front of Sanford and Angel to gain those points, or at least in front of Sanford. Angel maybe not be as important to finish in front of, but definitely Sanford. Sanford's got a lot of issues traffic here. Messina's not on the lead lap, just uh, to remind you. The Thaver, uh, this is what Thaver needs. A little further up the order, we've got Noah Hart, who needs this as well. He's going to get third, I think, out of this. Sean Angel had a very quick pit stop.
up while Ryan Griffin and Noah Hart had very slow pit stops. Incredibly slow pit stops here. As I think they were getting some damage actually done on their car, fixed on their cars. So James Shelley stays out once again. Jacob Hart should stay out as well. Jacob Hart from second place is on pit road now. Another longer pit stop here. This track they are really great pads on. is very hard on brakes. Uh, are required. James Shelley would pit from the lead now. We're going to see how long it takes for him to be on pit road. Could he have a slow brake pad change? Like I said, we don't typically do brake pads in a race, but um, we're expecting at this race and maybe the uh, Enduro at Road Atlanta next year to uh, see brake pad changes because, like I said, this track being so fast, you can almost point shoot in some places. It's very, very hard on those Aaron Perkins would grenade the motor in her 24 car here. We'll see in a second. And that'll be a tough break for Aaron Perkins as she was having a decent run. Here comes James Shelley out of the pits now. Shelley leads this race. Saber has now come into the pits. He was in provisional second. As uh, there's third place man, Jacob Hart. Or actually, yes, Jacob Hart is actually going to take second away. I think fourth is going to go to Ryan Matthews. And here comes a couple of other drivers. That's Sanford. Oh, crap! Big crash! That is Charles Sanford. Jacob Hart. And that is a very bad crash. There is Gabe Messina in it. And, oh, that was a scary one. It caught me off guard there. That was Tyler Faber. Also got a big piece of that because Faber was a car merging out of the pits. And there goes Samper off the track by Noah Hart. So Samper is definitely... Oh, and there's... Oh, gosh. Now another championship contender. That's Angel in it now. This race is turning into Death Race 2000. So Faber's coming out of the pits here. And that is the pit road exit line. But the track also merges over there. And that's where Jacob Hart's big hit by Jacob Hart there. And Charles Samper got a piece. So Hart hits him, across the track goes Sanford. Matthews gets away with minimal damage compared to the rest of the field, and that's where Messina hits him. Here comes out of the scene, that would be Noah. Hart and Sanford's driving away, Noah Hart's gonna come through the corner here. Not know which way Sanford's going and pretty much turn him. Sanford flies back on the track. Here comes Sean Angel onto the scene now, making it, ending his race, and Ryan Griffin's going to back it down and avoid pretty cleanly, I think. Oh, no, a little bit of contact there with Sanford. So this championship, which has gone every which way, now is going to go another way here as Sanford was looking very well here. Sanford, a few other drivers that were looking at do very well here, and you're going to see Jacob Hart versus over the, the line kind of does go that way. But you can't blame Thaver, because where's Thaver supposed to go? I think that's more of a track design fault than anything else, and you're just going to see Sanford gets rear-ended here, and there's just a lot of other stuff going on. Um, or with Jacob Hart, he was the last car in mathematical contention, and well... This right, he might still be in mathematical contention, because he's going to fall off. No, he won't be, because there's going to be one less race, obviously, but... Tough break for Jacob Hart. Trek Tauger would also grenade the motor right around the same time. As you can see, Ryan Griffin go by. This is actually a little bit sooner. But yeah, Tauger would fall out of the race. Nick Pericles also would come onto pit road, and they experienced some mechanical problems. So Pericles, who needed a good run, isn't going to get one here either. So I don't know who's going to mainly make out points today, but it's been a very topsy-turvy race with really the championship picture. It doesn't look anywhere near what it did, or looks pretty similar to what it did because everybody's fallen out. That is your second place car right now, Joshua Michaels, despite having heavy damage. Uh, you've got Ryan Griffin, who has persevered, Ben Atkins, who has persevered, Jacob Hart, who's still on pit road. I don't know even how many know how many cars are left. Doesn't seem like there's many, to say the least, they're all back markers. Like I said, the majority of this field now is back markers, and James Shelley just pretty much continue on his merry little way. And 
come home a pretty big victor today here in uh, El Salto. It's been a very chaotic race here, as uh, not a lot of people thought this would happen. On such a big track that the action would be this kind of uh, chaotic. Interesting now that Pericles is back out there. Um, he had a three laps down, but he's realizing he can get points now. He was on the road for nine minutes trying to fix that car. The crew was. Pericles is going to try and salvage this points day. We don't see this a lot in Arkansas, where you can salvage a point day by finishing like it is. But when the attrition rate's been as high as it's been, uh, this could be a pretty big day for Pericles. Another guy on that same kind of strategy is Kenny Maya. Maya just wants as many points as he can get out of this day as well. He didn't need much to be within striking distance of them, of the uh, two leaders. But now that the two points leaders are out, Maya could be a serious threat. Now, but he's got to get a few more points, and I think a couple of cars in front of him that haven't been classified yet have fallen out. That's Atkins out of the race. Atkins has just blown up his car. That's the 20 done. And with this track being as big as it is, whoa, whoa, there's Fontana getting into him. And around goes Atkins. So that's Atkins done. And well, here's Vincent Allen off the scene head just parking it for now. Meanwhile, the seven car has broken down and that's actually really hurt. Oh man, you gotta be kidding. James Shelley is stuck uh, going around maybe. I guess, maybe not. And that's actually put Michaels right up to him. And yeah, Shelly got really frustrated there. And now this whole pack's together. With the way this race has been now, that won't be good as Shelly blasts off into the distance as Dodd's holding up Michaels. I don't know what was going on there, why Shelly did that, but he did. Apparently there was a yellow flag in the area and Shelly wasn't allowed to pass. And he got busted for that earlier in the year, so with, even though there was issues there, oh, Michaels is coming down pit road now, that's going to put Griffin in second. So now the majority of the pack is held up like it was a safety car or something. And oh, Siren missed the pit road, and now he's got to go around again. Ryan Griffin now is firing his way down the stretch, he's in second position. Battling with Lushkin Ekdal, and actually, Pericles gets into him! That's gonna put them both off the track. Pericles gets the wall, that's gonna send... Oh, no, and now Vincent Allen gets into him. Mayans just avoiding it. Oh, man. This race has gone absolutely insane right now. Pericles gets going again, slowly but surely. Like I said, this is definitely an endurance race. A lot of people were thinking this would be an endurance race, just simply, even though the lap, the mile distance is the same, but just the lap uh, length would make it an endurance race. It certainly has been. Oh man, three wide on this track. We've already seen this race go up and out of here. Well, why would they try that? Maya, Maya, despite being a lap down, got by Vincent Allen, because he's faster than Vincent Allen. There's Ryan Griffin, who has re just wrecked, and he's faster than all of them. Except James Shelley, who has just been up there cruising to the easiest win of his life at this rate. Oh, no, that's not good. I thought I saw Vincent Allen nearly getting into basking her there. That could have been bad. But uh, they continue onward. And here comes Roma Greyhall out of the pits. I thought Chris Shelley would get into him there. That would be really, really bad for this race. I don't know who's... Luca Fontana, the Argentinian, is in second position right now in the 37 car. What a showing by Fontana. If he could somehow, if, if like Shelly falls out of the race, if Fontana wins this, I think there'd be a track riot. Uh, hometown hero showing that that car can't get on the podium. We've seen Alex Allen do it, the Nokia Finland. Uh, Vincent Allen's in third. Beyond that, I don't know. I don't know Brian Griffin's in fourth in the pits. Fifth is Scott Roush in the pits. And sixth is Joshua Michaels, who just came out of the pits. And then I believe, yeah, that's pretty much it for the lead lap. Uh, Thaber's on it, too. I apologize. Thaber is not on the lead lap. He's doing kind of what my and Pericles are. He's just trying to salvage a day. He's just in front of them, I think. I think he's in front of the nine. I'll have to see if he's in front of the nine right now. Yes, he is definitely. They're all on the lead lap, though. But uh, Faber might go a third lap down here. 
not the lead lap, but the same lap, rather. Tabor's gonna go a third lap down to change Shelly here. Shelly has gotta be laughing at this entire race, because he's driven an absolutely flawless race while everybody else around him is self-destructed. So the American 700 winner, retiring at the end of the year along with Kenny Myatt, is on course for the easiest win of his career as long as he can keep the car on the track. This is a battle for position between Ray Hall and Thaber. And Thaber is doesn't want to lose another position. He has a long shot for the championship and he still has a chance at it. And with uh, Sanfer and all the rest falling out, Sanfer and a few other cars falling out, or Sanfer Angel rather, I couldn't think of Angel's name there, uh, Thaber could end up gaining quite a bit out of this. Right now, James Shelley is running a lap time that is two seconds faster than the majority of the field, with the exception of... No, no, never mind. Two seconds faster than everybody else, so... Granted, I'll be honest, you know, Pia Finland that's running second, he's driven an equally as flawless race as here comes Shelley down the pits. The you Nopia know, Finland in second position has been flawless today. I don't think there's a scratch on that car. But uh, Shelly is just so much faster than him right now. And uh, it isn't the fastest car on the track, but that's where Nokia Finland has been very strong with that car. Is that on the 37 car, the Nokia Finland here, just taking the lead here. They, that team has the undeniable ability of picking up where others have faltered. And that team's getting Kona's eggs next year. So I would expect that team to be a serious, serious contender next year. Long, long pit stop for James Shelley. There's something wrong with that car. They got the hood up. So Shelley, the leader, is now having a lot of issues. Ryan Griffin's on pit road. I think uh, Rouch has been on pit road for seemingly a year. So now I think the actual race leader of this race is the Argentine driver, Luca Fontana, second position being so actually now, Shelly's been lapped. He's been on the pits the entire lap. Oh no, oh, I thought that was gonna be bad there with Alex Allen and Ekdal there. That could have been really bad. So actually, Luca Fontana on Baird is leading this race. Second, I don't even know who's in second. That would be Vincent Allen in that. Third still is technically James Shelley. It'll actually go to Michaels. Fontana now is on pit road with, um, for a pit stop. However, they're saying they might have problems. So Fontana's on pit road now. Shelley's still on pit road. There's Vincent Allen, who's just wrecked, I think, is in the lead. Oh, man, this race. Here, here's what happened. The three car just wrecked the eight. Around goes Vincent Allen from the lead into the wall. This race has been a disaster for everybody today. And now Allen would continue on. Ah, oh, but heartbreak for the Argentine driver. The Nokia Finland team, they were lined up for this, and now their hood's up on the track on the, there with engine problems. So uh -huh. Nokia Finland had it too, and I think now James Shelley's finally leaving the, the pits. Yes, he finally is leaving the pits. They fixed that car. I don't know who's going to lead this race, because I'm thinking Allen's going to have to pit too. And he's got a lot of damage. And will Allen, Vincent Allen able to make it around? Vincent Allen in the beat-up Red Bull. Well, There's only two laps to go. And yeah, Fontana's still on the road. There's second place man, Joshua Michaels. And Michaels is quite a bit faster than... Red Bull here, but is there enough time to catch up? Oh, contact there with the nine. Yeah, this track, I don't know if it's gonna come back. Uh, there's a, it, it, although really, at the, in the track's fall, every once in a while you just get one of these races where I don't think it's the track's fault. Honestly. However, with one lap to go, coming to take the white, Vincent Allen would have to pit. He doesn't have enough fuel to make it around. So Joshua Michaels is going to take the final lap. But does he have enough fuel to make it now? Joshua Michaels right now is the only car other than Vincent Allen on the lead lap, so he just needs to make it around and he's won the race. The 
the aid of Allen would get going again. However, Joshua Michaels doesn't have long to go. The 37 car is back out there as well, trying to salvage something. <coughs> Excuse me, Roman Rahal's up to third now. Somehow, but Michaels doesn't have long left in this race. Before he will be an Arc Solid Series winner. Uh, he might have won one a long time ago, Joshua Michaels, but he doesn't have long left. CJ Racing now. Well, they, they might be getting their first win with Joshua Michaels in a very chaotic race. Michaels comes off the final corner. And in a very chaotic round of Argentina, Michaels wins. For CJ Racing. Second position would go to Vincent Allen, who had needed that little splash of gas to win to finish the race. And he did finish second. That's going to be good for championship hopes for him. Is Shelly going to get third here? He might. Or might go to Ray Hall. I'm not sure. Nope, he's fourth. I think Ray Hall got it with third. Yes, Ray Hall was third. So, yes, Ray Hall was third. Shelly fourth. Yes, Hart fifth. That's good for his hopes. Fontana, despite almost winning this race, is going to come up sixth. And Thaber just blew up, coming to the line. So he's going to lose eighth for seventh to Roush. And Thaber has one of the back pit, or Thaber's got one of the front pit stalls. So he should be able to limp across the line and pit road, come home eighth. Good is the keyword. Yes, he does. So P8 goes to Faber. Barely beating Josh, uh, Lucian Ekdahl, and Jake Baskinger. So here's the rather messed up pit uh, results screen. Joshua Michaels is said to have won by a lap, which apparently he did do, as Vincent Allen had to pit for a longer period of time than we thought. Um, Roman, they counted him a lap down because Michaels had just come across the line when Allen was coming out. So that happened. Ray Hall third. Fourth is James Shelley. Fifth is Hart. Sixth is Fontana. Seventh is Roush. Eighth is Thaber. Ninth is Ekdal. Tenth is Baskinger. Eleventh is Shepard. Twelfth is Collins. Thirteenth is A Alex Allen. Fourteenth is Siren. Fifteenth is Pericles. Sixteenth is Maya Bolt. Those are Shelley. Seventeenth is Maya Bolt. Pericles and Shelly a favor just went back out there just to salvage a run. 18th is Eichholz, 19th is Griffin, 20th is Matthews, 21st is Dodd, 22nd is Kuznetsov, 23rd is uh, Atkins, 24th is DJ Chris, 25th is Sean Angel, so he will get a point over Sanford this weekend. Sanford was 26th and only scored one for starting the race. So, uh, looks like uh, one gain, one net gain by Angel on Sanford. He would have liked more. Anyway, that was the crazy round of Argentina. Oh, we got to go to points before we do that. Only a few, only 14 cars are left in the championship hunt. Uh, Sanford, Angel, and Pericles are the only ones within a race's points distance back. My, it's six out of that. Uh, Maya, Allen, Hart, and Thaber are really the only realistic ones. Aaron Perkins, Griffin, Ekdal, Matthews, Curtis, Baskinger, and Ray Hall, they all are long shots, really. And uh, Ray Hall and Baskinger are on the verge of getting eliminated, as is. So, we'll see you next week for the round of Bahrain.